Nicholas Becker is the sound designer behind Sound of Metal. I'm Kevin Jacobson of Gold Derby here with Nicholas. And I'm curious just to start if you had done any work before that was related to deafness and the culturally deaf community before you signed on to the film. Not really, but um, I I work with, with some film where this aspect of being inside in your body was, was really present like 127 hours, you know, or uh, also um, uh, gravity, you know, right. and also maybe, uh, uh, how you call it, like a first, first contact, you know, no, mm -hmm. what, not, not first contact, arrival, sorry, because it's in the, to the title is, is different in France, arrival or so, you know. So in all this film, you have this aspect of you really like, uh, there is a point of hearing, you know, which, which is very specific or a point of view and a point of hearing, which is very specific. So I think what I've, I've, I've developed through that film was not similar, but helped me to, to kind of try to understand how I could work on the film, you know. Uh, I also spend, because I'm doing a lot of musical research myself, so also I spend a lot of time um, in an echoic chamber, you know, they are like chamber which are totally dead. So I, I spend a lot of time working in that kind of, of environment. So when you are in that kind of place, you, you really hear your heartbeat, you hear the tendons, you hear the blood pressure, you, you know, you, you're actually in your body, you know. Mm -hmm. So also I, I spend a lot of time recording sound uh, underwater. And actually, what's happening when you actually uh, uh, record sound underwater, or even when you are underwater, it's like uh, you're not listening through your ears. It's actually your um, bones and your tissue which are resonate and bring this vibration to your cochlea. So it's it's very very similar. The, the what you hear underwater is very similar to uh, what you hear when, when your ears are not working, you know? So that's also um, what I can say that um, Darius and Abe, his brother, which is a musician, were hugely documented. You know, when they came to me, they already, um, they, 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 were, they were already knowing so much things, you know, about that physiologically, but also stories, a description uh, from CODA people or from uh, audiologists, you know? So I was with, between my experimental background through the, through the, the idea of, of recreating inner uh, sound point of hearing and what they actually uh, exchange with me in terms of information, scientific and, and personal uh, personal uh, um, information, you know, I think we, we, we really did something, I think something which is really, I wouldn't say naturalistic because it's a fiction, it's a film, but something I think people can uh, uh, feel that it's not far from reality, you know? Absolutely. And that was something very important for us. And it's exactly is the same idea about, for example, example the fact that um, uh, Darius asked Olivia and, and Riz to be able to play music, you know? Not like play, playback, no playback, you know? It was like, they, they, so there is also the physical aspect you know, is very important. The fact that they start, they shoot the film from the, the start of the, the start until the end, you know, so they could also experience the story, you know, physically also, day after day. The fact that uh, it was shot in 35 millimeters, you know, with the engagement and the risk you take, you know, mm -hmm. so I think, all that was very coherent, you know, like all of that was really going in, in the right and the same direction.
you know. And yeah, uh, the fact that yeah. also the other thing which was super important that uh, if you do a film with sound, most of the time, even if it's the topic is about sound, people are like built all the the film and the editing of the film. It's based on the storytelling, and uh, and mostly with the picture, you know. And Darius knew from the start that he need to um, to find an editor which will be able to collaborate with me because we know that the language we need to find will, shouldn't be only a, a visual language, you know, with a nice uh, sound, like a nice wallpaper. But th that it, it would be very important the sounds could be structurally used, you know, in, 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 in the process of, of making the film. Yeah. Yeah, and and just from reading up on it, there's so much you did on a on just even a micro level to capture even the tiniest of sounds, like from Riz's body, like even his eyelids closing. Um, how did you go about just accomplishing all those very detailed little kinds of sounds? I mean, uh, I think um, when the first time um, Darius came to, to, to Paris, I bring him into that uh, uh, anechoic chamber and I close the light and I put him like in total silence and darkness for 30 minutes, you know? Mm -hmm. And then when he came out, he was like, wow, you know? I, I, you know, I, I want to recover that in the film, you know? And so I said, this is great. So we have to look for that. And, and I, so I try to beat like, I, I found very, very sensitive stethoscope and I, and I bought very specific ultra sensitive microphone. So we create like DIY, extremely sensitive uh, steth mic, stethoscope microphone, you know? So I was able to, uh, uh, and we use also other uh, accelerometers, geophones, like microphone, which are like 100 more times more sensitive than the human ear, you know? So we, we, we put Riz Ahmed in, in the booth, you know, like super quiet booth, and we actually record a lot of texture with him, you know, to be able to actually, uh, you know, like you hear the, the movement of the, sometime of the, of the bones or the tendons or the, you know, you, you feel. And, 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 and also because I knew that people know that, I, I, it's funny because if you listen to the, for example, the opening of Gravity, you know, there is a rumble, you know, a really specific rumble. And in fact, uh, this rumble is, is my, my head, you know? And it's, it's, I put like very sensitive microphone on my, my skull, you know, and that's the resonance of the blood pressure in the skull, you know? Wow. And I do believe that everybody knows this sound without to knowing it, you know? And, and, and everybody about the opening of, of gravity was saying like, oh, it's crazy straight away. You know, we are in, 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 in space and we are in the body of the character, you know, like embodied with the character. And I thought, oh my God, you know, this is very interesting. It's, 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 it seems like, you know, without even thinking about it, people straight away, you know, know what it is and they understand it, you know? So I, I, I thought about this thing that it, it would be very interesting to push that forward, you know, and, and try to, to, go even more precisely in, in, in the body of Sonic wise in the body of the of the character. Right. It's almost an instinctual thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think um, I think and I think that also what it make it like universal. Yeah. You know? So it's not a link to any culture or any, you know, it's something really like a reptilian or archaic or something, you know, very, very deep and very straight. And I think it's also a way to to to, to connect with the audience very, very, in a very direct way, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I also just want to talk about the, the cochlear implant sequences mm -hmm. because they're such standouts for your, your work here. And mm -hmm. they're so heartbreaking because, you know, it's like the sound is so grating and Ruben is just really struggling to cope with that. Uh, what was your process for creating that very distinct sound of those uh, implants? Uh, for those implants, we, we had uh, also uh, uh, 
interview or documentation from Coda people. So it's people which which are born with hearing, you know, and they lost hearing. Mm -hmm. And then after they had this cochlear implant, so they are able to describe, you know, the sound of it because they had in their life a period where they were hearing correctly. So 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 they were able to describe it. So we work with this description and we have also audiologists who made simulations, you know. So I start from these two things and I made a lot of experiments and I knew that what should be interesting because in a way, this cochlear implant, it's like a digital information going directly in a nerve, you know? So it shouldn't, my idea is that it shouldn't be like electric distortion. It should be like a mechanical distortion. It should be, you know, it should be in another uh, world. You know, I, so I thought it should be really like in a digital world, you know, and, and, and in the digital world, in terms of sound, there is different technology. There is a lot of, most of the, the biggest part of the technology is a, is a sound technology, which is simulates or model the analog technology, you know, but there is new tools which are working in another domain, like FFT analysis, sound granulation, you know, and, and so there's there another way of, of using sound or, 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 or understanding sound, you know. And for example, they are able to separate with this kind of technology, we can separate not the low frequency or the high frequency or the mid frequency, but you can separate, for example, everything which is harmonic from low to high, everything which seems like attack, you know, and everything which is like noise, you know, so because when we speak, we have the three aspects which are combined in one language and in one, one sound. So the idea was to actually separate every single sound into these three categories and reconstruct them. And of course, the process is, is creating some, uh, some artifacts, you know, and it's a bit like the idea also of the voice. It's, it's so... Uh, I mean, it's the things we, the sound we know the most, you know, because we are speaking all the time. So voice is very sensitive, you know. If you transform the voice too much, you're like going straight away, put the people in the uncanny valley, you know, because they, <coughs> you know that you know that something is wrong. <coughs> so it's a bit like the idea of also of uh, um, um, Frankenstein, you know. It's mm -hmm. not because you got like pieces of human. Uh, 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 that even if you put that back, it's not going to work, you know. So if you, in a way, like cut this, this all this sound or in three different bits, you know, in three different bits, and try to reglue them same together, it's not going to. It's going to be wrong, you know. So, but but you feel that it's it's actually a real voice. You know, so you 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 feel that the content is right. So it's not like a synthetic voice. But you feel that it's not matching, you know. So we actually, um, in a way, break. You know, I did the sound editing like in a normal way, and each element of the sound editing was like break in three parts and reconstruct. And then after we have these two layers, like the normal layer, which is like natural sound, and like this super weird layer. And so we were able to mix, you know, and to really. You know, sometimes because we know that it's important to get one word or, you know, sometimes there is key moment you need to understand some, 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 not everything, but some of the keywords need to be understood. So we were really working with this, you know, trying to find the, 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 the right mix between uh, what we say, the, the, the dry, the wet effect, the wet and the dry, you know, the effect and the, and the normal uh, sound. And also, uh, that was about uh, the sound by itself. But then the second aspect is about um, the specialization of the sound, okay? So when in reality you have, you have there is two moments where it can be very complicated for you to understand where you are. It's when or you get information which are contra contradictory, you know? So 
you get in the same time one information who say right and another information who say left. You know, so your brain is like, doo, 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 you know, it's, it's lost. And also the other, the other way is like you receive the same information from everywhere. So actually you can't make a difference, you know? So we play with these two aspects of, 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 of specialization or creating something where you actually can't, you don't have enough information to know where you are, or you get so much information that your brain is, is don't know what to, to, how to deal with it, you know? So we use like these two aspects, aspect in terms of, 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 you know, transforming this sound and like breaking this sound in pieces and, and, and try to reglue them. And also working with, uh, with uh, this way of, of creating the, 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 the things that you, 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 you don't manage to, to, you don't know how to place your, your place, to place the sound in space, you know? And then the last aspect, which were like something uh, invent the amazing uh, mixer who worked with us. He did like, a, if you want, he did like a, a first crown of sound, uh, which were more like the idea of the head of ribbon. And then another crown of sound, which were like, let's say the, the environment. And in, normally it should be, should be like working, you know, together. So instead of that, he did like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So you even like, there's even a, a, another layer where you actually, you know, there is something not working also in terms of, you know, there is something it's not fit, you know? Yeah. So I think we, we, we try to put a lot of, um, I mean, I think with these three things, we were really able to create something, I think, special. Absolutely. And it's fascinating hearing you break all that down. We only have a, a few a few minutes left, actually, but um, I just wanted to talk about how you were recently nominated by the Cinema Audio Society, as well as the Motion Picture Sound Editors Awards for your work on this film. Um, I mean, what is it like getting this type of recognition from your peers for this film in particular? I mean, I mean, you know, like it's funny because I, I, I worked, you know, I worked on Gravity and I worked on uh, Arrival and I worked on other, I mean, like, so I had, I received already MPAC, but I never went to, I never went to a ceremony because I said like, you know, this is great film, but I was like only some folded, folded artist or for these two films. Uh, and I said like, you know, I, I really want to go one, if I want to go, it's really for something I really like. I, I, I love, you know, for me, it's, I, I, so I, I say, I, I prefer to wait, you know, I, I prefer to be patient. Maybe one day I'm going to do a film I really love, you know, and, 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 and I want, you know, and I want, and this time I want to be there. So of mm -hmm. course, because of the pandemic, I might not be there, sure. but my, my, you know, but all my soul and my heart will be there in a way that this is for me such an important film and, and, and because I really love the film, you know, it's not only a film with a lot of, crazy explosion and like, you know, it, it, it's something re really deep and simple. And it's also about silence. It's about also about respecting the audience, you know, also for me, that's something also very important. So it's not like uh, too performative, you know, and, and, and it's also, uh, uh, no, it's, it's so for me, it's really like, and, and I love Darius, you know, I think he's, 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 it's his first film, but he's one of the best director I never worked with and he's, he's doing his first film. It's, it's absolutely insane, you know, he, 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 he was able to control every aspect of the film, you know, with, but in a nice way, speaking with all the people, be able to interact with everybody, you know. I mean, it was it was so impressive, you know. So I'm I'm super happy also because all the team which is with me, Carolina, my assistant, uh, uh, all the mixer. I mean, like, uh, I mean, such nice people, you know. They they all became friends, you know. I mean, like that's also something very particular that we 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 all. I mean, even if the film, I mean, it's happen, what's happened with the film is amazing. But what, what there is some, some, I mean, what's happened between us is so strong that, you know, if, even if the film would, we didn't have this, this, this amazing uh, story, you know, career, 
we 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 are still communicating, sharing, you know, ideas. We are we are you know, we we, we so it's it's also a beautiful human story, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you can tell that you have such passion for it. The whole team does. But thank you so yeah. much, Nicholas. It's really stunning work. Congrats on your nominations and best of luck to you uh, moving forward. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. And for those bye of bye. you watching, hit like and subscribe for more interviews just like this and head to goldderby.com to make your award season predictions.